guys, Rick Stoney here from Our Stony Acres. Hopefully you enjoyed a little shot of my seedlings that are just starting to come up. We planted these guys about five days ago and so they're just starting to come up. It's a little bit of kale is what you were seeing there. So today in this video we are going to be talking about seedlings that you can be planting or seeds that you can be planting indoors in February if your last frost date is in May. Okay. So the basic calculation is going to be last frost date sometime in May, we count back 12 weeks and sometime in February, we are going to be starting these seedlings indoors. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Before we get started, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, click that notification bell so you get noticed every time I release new videos. I'd also love it if you could go over and follow us on Instagram. We've got a good little following over there. And make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I'm going to talk to you about a seed starting challenge that we are thinking about running the first part of March. And I'd love to have you guys get involved with that as well. Okay, so today we're talking about February seeds that we can plant indoors if your last frost date is sometime in May. Okay, so the most important thing that you need to know on February planting is when that last frost date is. And so there's a couple of different ways that you can figure that out. You can, there's, there's places online that you can look them up. There's, there's frost calculators, just Google um, frost calculators. Morning Chores has one, um, old, old Farmer's Almanac has one. They're a little hit and miss on the dates there, but that's one way that you could do it. Another great way would be check and see if your local agricultural college has published a list of last and first frost dates for your area. So go to that college. So for me, it would be Utah State University. So I'm gonna Google Utah State University last frost dates for Utah. And they have published a list that gives me a really good idea, much more accurate um, as to when my last frost date is. But the best way to figure it out is to ask a local expert. So if you don't know somebody that's been gardening for quite a while, um, that would be probably a really good person to talk to. Or uh, if you don't know somebody like that, then go to your local nursery, not like a big box store, but a, a local professional nursery and ask them. They ought to be able to help you pin down when that frost date is because is what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that frost date. So for example, my May last frost date is May 15th. So I count back 12 weeks and that means all of the plants that we're gonna be talking about today, we will be starting those roughly February 15th. And then you've got about a two week window. So from February 15th till right around the 1st of March, where I can be planting all of these seedlings indoors. And then we're going to transplant them out about four to six weeks before our last frost. All of these plants are frost tolerant. And so they'll go out sometime in April. Um, and then we will be able to, to have a, an amazing harvest of these cool season crops. So let's talk about the first family of plants that you can be planting in February, and that would be the brassica family. So the brassica family is basically anything that's related to cabbage, okay? So cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, kohlrabi, Brussels sprouts, kale, and collards. All of those can be planted indoors about 12 weeks before your last frost date, and you can even go as much as 10 weeks before, and then your, your target plant time out in the garden is sometime in the first to mid-April, or you know four to six weeks before your last frost date, depending on where it is um, and what, where you've calculated that out. But all of those crops are very frost tolerant, so they're gonna like that time of the year and are going to do very well. So that's the brassica family. Now the next group of plants that you can be planting this time of year in February is leafy greens. So here we're talking about spinach, lettuce, Swiss chard, arugula, bok choy, totsoy, all of the other Asian greens, and then even some of the more exotic greens like dandelion or minzua, things like that. You, if you would like to, you can plant those indoors in February and they'll, they'll then be transplanted outdoors sometime in April. Um, for an extra early harvest of your crops, okay? Now, there's a few other kind of here and there individual crops that you could still be planting. One of those is bunching onions. Sometimes we'll refer to these as green onions or scallions, but those are essentially the onions that we're planting not to have big bulbs from, but instead just to have the green onion from, okay? All of those, you can still plant those in February and you're gonna be putting those out in the garden sometime in April. So February is a great time to be getting those type of onions planted, okay? 
Celery is another that is very, very good to get started in February and then put out sometime in April into your garden. That will give them a nice head start. Uh, they'll grow up in the cool season and mature really, really well. So celery is a great one to get started in February, okay? And then the last one on the list is tomatoes. Okay, wait, what? Tomatoes? Okay, let me explain. If you are planning on putting some early tomatoes out in your garden and are planning on protecting them with what we call a wall of water, okay? So wall of waters are these water-filled clutches that wall of water is kind of the name brand, but there's a whole bunch of different off brands as well. They have these little cells that you fill up with water and they create a little greenhouse effect and you're able to plant your tomatoes six weeks earlier than you normally could. So for me, May 15th is my last frost date. I can actually put some tomatoes in on April 1st, cover them with a wall of water, and they are going to grow up and do really, really well and give me an extra early harvest of tomatoes. Now, I don't do this with all of my tomatoes. I'll maybe only do two to four plants a year that I start in wall of waters, but I do that because I like to have those early tomatoes. And some years I get tomatoes as early as late June, and my target is always to have some tomatoes for our 4th of July celebration, okay? So that is um, a, a fun thing to do, but you're only going to be planting tomatoes in February if you're gonna offer that kind of protection. If you're not gonna offer a wall of water to protect it, then it's way too early to be starting tomatoes indoors. But if you're gonna do that, February is the time to kind of target getting some of those planted, okay? All right, so, all of the crops that we talked about today, with the exception of the tomatoes that need the extra protection, um, will do really well out in the garden on their own. So, you know, four to six weeks before your last frost, they're hardy enough and frost tolerant enough that they should do just fine out in the garden unprotected. But if you would like to have them thrive even more, then you could buy some of the heavy fabric row cover and cover those plants on the really frosty nights. So we're talking, you know, those, those April cold snaps that come in and maybe you might even have a little snow or something like that. Um, nights that are below freezing, pretty solidly below freezing. If you were to cover those plants with a heavy fabric row cover, that would help them to thrive and to do even better. But not 100% necessary with all those cool season crops, but it will help them um, to even thrive and grow even better if that's something you're interested in doing, okay? All right, so that is all I have for you for this week. Please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, click the notification bell so you get notice every time I release new videos. We are getting dangerously close to 100,000 followers on my channel. I would love to know that I've got 100,000 followers um, that are gardeners that I'm able to teach. That would be awesome. So subscribe if, uh, if you would like to join the, the team, okay? Um, also, make sure you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're gonna do some planting in February, snap a picture and tag me over on Instagram. I would love to see what you guys are doing. So tag me over on Instagram and um, I'd love to see what's happening there, okay? Then one last thing before we go that I wanted to tell you about. We just finished up our February version of our seed starting challenge. And this is a seven day event where I have some courses for you. They're about 20 minutes long. Every day you have a 20 minute course. It ends with a homework assignment, has a nice workbook that goes along with it. And from front to finish, by the end of that challenge, you will be ready to plant your own seedlings. And we had just an amazing group of 150 students that were in this February program. It was so amazing that we thought maybe we would try running it again the very first part of March. So for those of you that are in a little bit of the colder zones, or for those of you that are just interested in starting warm season crops, this would be the perfect time to join that challenge. So here's the deal. We would like to have 75 people that are committed to joining the challenge. And this is a paid challenge. It's $25 is the cost. And so we're, we're accepting people on our wait list right now. We already have about 15 people on the wait list. We would like to get about 75 people on the wait list. If we can get 75 people, then we will go ahead and run that challenge again. So down in the description, there is a link or even right up here, there's a link that you can click that will take you over to our website and let you sign up for that wait list. And so if that's something that sounds like it would be fun for you and you would be interested in doing, please go sign up for the wait list. Let us know that you're interested. If we hit that 75 number, we'll run the challenge a second time this year. Like I say, it was a lot of fun. 
just finished it up, had a blast, um, great participation, and a lot of people are now starting their own seedlings um, indoors because of that. And I would love to have you come and join it too. So go sign up for that wait list. Okay, that my friends is all I have for this week. Everybody have a great week. We'll see you next week. Happy gardening.